So permutations with repetition. So we've done all these arrangements, right? But they've always been distinguishable objects. There are five different books or seven different letters. Okay. And so let's start with ones like that. So how many different or distinguishable, either word, arrangements of the letters in the word bows? How many are there? Number, you can give me the this factorial or something P something. Yes, you are. Huh? Yes. Yeah. And you're on the track. Where is it? Yeah. No, I'll say it again. Four times three Yeah, or you can give me the, the fundamental canon principle, right? So it's four times three times two times one, or four factorial. Right, or 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, or 4P4, four four, all of which are 24, right? So there are 24 possible ways to arrange the letters B O S E such that these arrangements are distinguishable, and there they are. So B O S E, B O E S, B O, you know, B O, etc. Right? 24 of them. Now, if you want to copy them out, I'll, I'll pause. So these are all distinguishable. The thing is, what if we change the E to an S? So, there's actually nothing hiding down here. What if then what? So let's do that. <laughs> so I'm going to go through, I'm going to rewrite these, changing every E to an S, and then we want to see how many different arrangements, right? Each of those are different, right? You agree? I didn't repeat anything, I don't think. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to rewrite everything. But everywhere I see an E, I'm going to write an S. Not the most exciting thing in the world, is it, running through? Should have done this on the word processor. I probably, I actually probably could have done this on the word processor. Okay. Oh, wait. I'm supposed to not. <laughs> See? Okay, so there's 24 of them, but how many are distinguishable? Because we can see that we've got two bosses, right? Can you tell the difference between BOSS and BOSS? No. You can see that uh, this and this are the same, that these two are the same, that these two are the same, that uh, these two and these two. So, how many distinguishable arrangements are there now? There's 12, right? So, what's happened is the 24 arrangements have now become 12. So, the 24 different. 
arrangements. Have become twelve. Now, so what fraction of the original do we now have that are different? Half of them, right? So you say we have a half, or where'd my extend page go? End page. Okay, so we have one half or one over two factorial of the original arrangements. Okay, so now we're going to go through and we're going to replace all of the O's with S's as well. So now, let's go through again. And replace all O's with S's. Okay. And So B S S S B S S S B S S S B S S S B S S S B S S S S B S S S B S S S B S S Sorry, that's S S B S. Uh, S S B S S S S B S S B S S B S B S S S B S S S S B S S S S B S S B S S S S B S B S S S B S S S S B S S S B S S B S Okay, so how many of those are distinguishable? Okay, so we've got four, right? So we've got one, there are the SSBSs. They're kind of hidden around there. I'll underline them. Two, three, four, five, six of them, right? So we now have four different, right, or distinguishable sets of letters, right? And really, it either it starts with a B, or the B is the second letter, or the B is the third letter, or the B is the fourth letter, right? Because B is the only letter you can really tell apart from the S's, right? I mean, you can tell the B and the S apart. But. So we now have six arrangements. So what fraction is that of the original? So we now have six, or sorry, four different, not six, what did you say four? You said four, right? We now have four different arrangements. Right. It's really four groups of six, right? If I were to, you know, somehow, uh, if we do the triple B, triple S's, I don't know, where's there a bunch that are easy to see it together? Not so much easy to see together here, I guess. Just that first bunch that all start with the Bs. So we have four different arrangements. What fraction of that is of the original is that? So we started with 24. So we have what fraction? One sixth. One sixth. 
What's another way to say 1 over 6? Pre factorial, right? Because we've got three letters that are the same now, right? The three S's. So this leads to doing permutations with repetitions, okay? So we have. 4 factorial over 3 factorial arrangements. And up here, over here, we had 4 factorial over 2 factorial arrangements, right? And 4 factorial is the 24 we started with. But if we have repetition, when we repeated 2, we had half the arrangement. When we repeated 3, right? Because those three S's can be arranged in three factorial ways, right? Like. You know, if, if I wanted to make them distinguishable, I could say this is S1, S2, S3, right? The first S, the second, and the third S. And then I could say we've got 1, 3, 2. And then I could say we've got 2, 1, 3, and then 2, 3, 1, and then 3, 1, 2, and then 3, 2, 1. Okay. That's how, but we can't tell them apart, right? They're all S's. So those three letters, the three S's, can be arranged in three factorial ways. And we basically need to divide that out. So permu permutations with repetitions works this way. The number of permutations of n objects where a are the same of one kind, B are the same of another kind, and C are the same of a third kind. Right? If we had four, you know, a fourth kind that were the same or a fifth kind, we would repeat this. Is n factorial, which is the arrangements of the objects, right? Divided by a factorial, b factorial, c factorial. Right. So in other words, what we're going to do is divide out the arrangements that are the same, the ones we can't tell apart. When I've got three S's there, I'm going to divide by three factorial, right? because I cannot tell S1 from S2 from S3, but those three S's will be arranged in six different ways. Okay. So we will divide out three factorial or six. So let's do this. Wait, did you got that down? Okay. It's in the book, pretty sure. Somewhere. Gotta be. <coughs> Gotta give that format. Not on the formula sheet though. Okay, so there's something you have to know. And when <coughs> we do permutations with repetitions, we always choose all the objects. Right? You're not gonna do the n choose r. You know, so like five choose or sorry, choose. Don't use the word choose. We're not gonna do the five P three stuff. We always do five P five, right? Or just five factorial. Okay. So we're really just gonna use this formula. It's always all of the objects, and then we divide out um, the ones that are the same. take all of the objects and then just divide out the ones that are the same by the factorials. Not on the formula sheet, so you have to know this. Right. And then we do some of this stuff with restrictions as well. All right, so I'm going to slide this up. Determine the number permutations of 
the letters. And the word mathematics. First step, how many letters are there in the word mathematics? Eleven. Okay. So we put down eleven factorial. So there are eleven factorial neighbors, but there's two m's which we can't tell apart, right? So m's, two of them, what do I divide by? Two factorial. How many a's are there? So we divide by 2 factorial. How many t's are there? So we divide by 2 factorial. Okay, That's for the m's, that's for the a's, that's for the t's. How many h's? How many e's? We already did the m's, the a's, and the t's. How many i's, c's, and s's? Just one of each. Right? So this is what we work out. 11 factorial divided by 2 factorial, 2 factorial, 2 factorial. So if you do that on your calculator, you're going to go 11 factorial divided by, and then put down brackets. Right, so that you work that out. And what do we get? So now we're going to do the same idea, only we're going to put some restrictions on things, right, that we have to deal with. So let's take uh, of the word. <coughs> and when we say arrangements, we mean distinguishable, right, ones you can tell apart. of the word puppies, and we're going to do a few different things here, right? If A, uh, without restrictions, okay, so if we're not going to restrict this, then how many arrangements? Express it first in factorial notation. So seven factorial because there are seven letters. Over. Three factorial, right? Because three of them are P's. So there's a lot more. Which is what? Seven times six times five times eight forty. Okay. Right. So you're just plugging this in your calculator, right? Now keep in mind, right? Some of the questions they may ask, or we may ask, or I may ask, because got a quiz coming up, right? Tomorrow. So questions would be asked on the quiz tomorrow might be expressed in factorial notation, right? As opposed to giving you the actual number. So that you have to be able to read a situation and convert it into a permutation or into a factorial notation or something to say, yeah, that's the particular answer. B, if each arrangement begins 
Ravens. Really? With the P. So if they all have to be in with a P, what are we going to do? Can't be the same as A, right? Because we know that in A it could begin with a P or a U or an I or an E or an S. So how are you gonna handle this? Five by four. Five by four. Yeah, I think so. So what if we just took one of the P's and threw it out? I mean, if we're going to begin with a P, then we might as well just toss that one in the garbage, right? It's not there. So it's 6 factorial divided by 2 factorial. Okay. So just take the first P. Take a P. Throw it away. Don't need that. Or put it down, put it in place, right? And then say, now what? Okay, now I've got six letters left to arrange, two of which are the same. So that's 6 factorial over 2 factorial, which is... 360. Okay, does that make sense? So your restriction is got to begin with a P. What do you do? Take a P. Take it out of there, right? Who cares? It's gone. Right? What am I left with now? I'm left to arrange six letters, two of which are the same. What if the first two letters are P? Five factorial, right? Okay, so we've got P U P P I E S, um, right? We toss away two of the. So just think about it, right? We got P U P P I E S. We toss away these two guys here, right? Take them out. Who cares? Here's the beginning. Go there, right? You go line up. What's left? One, two, three, four, five letters, none of which are the same. So just five factorial. And now. We're in next. Go do this on here. Here's something you haven't thought about. Well, okay, actually, do this first. If all the P's have to be together, so what if all the P's have to be together? Put them all together. P, P, P. Yeah. So it's one, two, three. So imagine Scrabble tiles, right? We put all the P's together. Now remember, we did this the other day, but it was like KCN and there was, I don't know, the vowels, right? And something. And oranges, right? But if they had to be in order, there's only one order, right? A, E, O. But if they could be in any order, there were three factorial. Here, it's three factorial divided by three factorial, right? There's three letters, three of which are the same. So it's just one, right? There's only one way to put those three P's in. So really, we end up having equivalent of 500. So it's just five factorial, or 120. Okay, so if all the P's have to be together, it really just becomes five letters, the three P's, now treated as one letter, because they got to be together, right? They're moving as a block. What if the first letter is a P,
and the next one is not. So first letter is a P, the next one isn't. How's that different from B? are there. So you've got to begin with a P, so let's say one of those. Not a P. How many not a P? Okay, four, right? U-I-E-S. And then we're going to arrange, now how many letters do we have? Let's just write them out. Okay, so took out a P. We took out one of the not a P, for example. Okay, what's left? What do I write? I want to arrange that. Five factorial. And divided by divided by two factorial, right? So it's five factorial. You got five letters left, right? So okay, we took a P, gone. We said I need not a P. Okay, I got four choices for that, right? Not four factors, just four choices, right? And then I have five letters remaining, two of which are P's, so it's five factorial divided by two factorial. And that works out to. Does that one go to? 240. It's five factorial, yeah, six, yeah, 60 times four. So sometimes we have to deal with restrictions, right? And so you've got to really think about it, right? And remember, begins with a P means, okay, could begin with two P's, could begin with three P's. Begins with exactly one P, so okay, I got a P, now I have a choice. Now I have a choice of four letters, right? And then I can arrange all the rest of them, right? That begins with exactly one P. So if the first letter is a P and the next one is not a P, also could have said begins with exactly one P. Not allowed to have two, not allowed to have three. Which is different from B, right? Which was, okay. So how many arrangements are there that begin with exactly one, no, okay, wait, we did exactly one P. So, how many arrangements are there that begin with two P's or three P's? So there's 360 that begin with 1P or 2P or 3Ps, right? And there's 240 that begin with exactly 1P. So if we subtract, then we'll find the ones that begin with 2 or 3. So that's another way of thinking about this is, right, when I'm looking to find a particular number, maybe I already have the numbers I need, you know, figured out. And sometimes, some of the ways of counting, it's easier to do that. Reference 14B in yesterday's homework, right? Which was, I don't want to have to count all the different ways that I could have repeating digits, but I know that if I have no repetition and I have uh, the total number, which is everything, including you know all arrangements, you know, look at that. We can look back at A here, right? There's 840 possible arrangements. Um, you know, from that, then I can certain of these numbers to figure out how many arrangements have a certain characteristic. Okay, so sometimes that's what we're looking for. Okay, a couple more examples. Uh, find the number of arrangements. Of so 
sausages. Sausages. S A U S A G S. Yeah. That begin with. Two S's. Okay, do that. So you do that. Figure it out. Sausages begins with two S's. Even if you just punch in your calculator and have the number sitting there, calculate it, right? So you can know if you're doing this right. Let me let this one. How many arrangements are there of sausages that begin with two S's? Yeah. Throw out a number when you got it. Good number. 360. 360. So why is it 360? Take two S's out. How many letters does that leave me with? But of those six letters remaining, there are two A's. So we got to divide it out, right? The arrangements we just figured out, could it begin with three S's? Um, no. Yes. Yeah, yeah. we could. Yeah. <laughs> so some of those arrangements are the ones that begin with three S's, right? So what if now I say begins with exactly two S's? that up. What does exactly mean? Right, what does it mean? Can it begin with three S's? No. no. That's what it means. Begins with two S's, but the third letter cannot be an S. Right, because then it would begin with three S's. So begins with two S's just means, okay, begins with two S's, third letter can be anything you want. Begins with exactly two S's says third letter can't be an S. Not as easy as you think. Now, oh, you know, but you get the answer that's. Then maybe it is as easy as you think. Come up with a number. See, there's a what if thrown in here that you have to take into account, or a but if. Nah, I think it's a what if. I'll pause for you. <coughs> so it begins with exactly two S's. Now let's think about it this way, okay? So it begins with exactly two S's. So we've got the two S's there, right? So we've got A, U, A, G, E, S remaining, right? But we know that that can't be the next letter. So we threw, we've thrown out two S's, right? What can our third letter be? How many choices do we have? 
Fine, but there's a problem. If our third letter is an A, then when we go to arrange the other letters, there's no repetition. But if our third letter is a U, a G, or an E, then when we go to arrange the other letters, there is repetition. That's the problem. That's the what if. So to handle the what if, we have to do two cases, right? So we're going to do case one. Okay, so we've already thrown out two S's, right? So we're really just looking at the arrangements of this where the S can't be the next letter. So case one, if third letter is A, if third letter A. Okay, so case one, if the third letter is an A, then how many choices are there for an A? Actually, there's really only one because there's, you know, okay. So let's say we do this. So we're going to have S, S, A, right? That's gone. What's left? We've got U, A, G, E, S, right? So how many ways can these guys be arranged? Five factorial, right? Okay, so five factorial, which is 120. So if the third letter is an A, we then have the letters U, A, G, E, S, which can be arranged five factorial. Okay, what if the third letter is not an A? So case two. Third letter, not A. So we've got S, S. Okay, so third letter's not an A. So we've taken out the two S's. We've got these guys. But hang on, there's an A. Let's write them out. So, let's write them out. Hang on. A U A G E S. Third letter's not an A. We can choose from how many? Three, right? Because it can't be an S, and it's not an A. So it's got to be a U, a G, or an E, right? So there's three. After that, okay, so let's write this out again. So we've taken out one of these letters, let's say this one, leaving me with one, two, three, four, five. But divided by two factorial, right? Because two of them are A's. Which gives us how much? One eighty. Okay, so three hundred. Begin with exactly two S's. Why did I divide by? Why did I divide by three? No, that's an equals. 120, 180, and a total of 300. Sorry. Adding, right? That plus that is 300. So there are 300 ways. Is there another way to do this? Because that was a bit of a pain, right? Let me ask you this. Of the ways that begin with two S's, these guys, how many of these are three S's? We're asking the question, how many ways are there of having exactly three S's? Okay, so S, A, U, S, A. Begin with three S's. Okay, so just get rid of them, right? What do we got left? Five over, which is 60. 360 minus 60, 300, right? That's probably an easier way. Because you have to know there's more than one way to do this, right? And that some ways are easier than others. And working out the cases, right? Well, okay, the third letter is an A, and then I don't have any repetition in the remaining five, or the third letter isn't an A, and then I have, right? You don't want to deal with those two cases. So instead, you think about it this way. 
the, the first one we did, <coughs> input two S's included two S's or three S's, right? So they're all together. That 360 includes the ones that begin with two, the ones that begin with three. It's actually fairly easy to figure out the ones that begin with three S's, right? It's almost trivial, right? It's just five factorial over two factorial. And if we take away the number that begin with exactly three from the number that begin with two or three, we're left with the number that begin with exactly two. Right? Easy peasy. One last thing. And this is, uh, <clears throat> I'm actually going to ask you to skip one of the questions in the textbook over this, but it's called pathways. Pathways. And it's something we used to do a lot in, uh, in Math 30 and in Applied Math 30, and it's applicable to here. So let's say that these are city blocks. And that I live at A, and the Starbucks is at B, and I want to walk to the Starbucks. Okay? And in order to get there, I've always got to move closer. Right? So I have a choice. I can go down or I can go across. We'll call the down uh, south. So let's just go with directions, right? North, east, south, west. So we'll call the down block south and we'll call the, to the right blocks east, right? So like this is east, 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 and this is south, 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 south. So I could go east, 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 south, 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 south. If I got the same number of each, let's add one more. There. Come on. Five E's. So I have to travel five blocks east and four blocks south, right, in order to get to the Starbucks. So the way that you can think about this is I have five E's and four S's, and they could be arranged like this. Or they could go east, south, east, south, east, south, east, south, east. Or they could go south, 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 you know, etc. Right? Any arrangement of those. So here's the question How many letters am I arranging in total? There are nine letters, right? They can be arranged nine factorial ways, but <coughs> five of them are E's, so what are we going to do? And four of them are S's. So how many different routes can I take from my house to Starbucks? Two hundred and? One hundred and twenty-six. One hundred and twenty-six. There are one hundred and twenty-six different routes, right? So, like, you know, I'm going to have to repeat three times. Well, if I went there every day, then I would have to, you know, repeat a route about three times in a year. That would give me actually 378 or something, so that's a little bit more. Okay? Now, do this <coughs> again. And this was actually asked on like the very first Pure Math 30 exam had a question like this. In, uh, it was actually in the written response. Right? The same deal. Right? And it really was. It was just an arrangement. It's just an arrangement of letters. Right? I mean, if I need to go there, then you know, I could follow this path here. South, east, uh, you know, east, then go south, east, 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 and that's south. That's one, right? So there's 126 of these in this little block. And we used to show you how to count that out by, you know, doing stuff in, in, the, tri in, the, uh, in the squares. And the book may show that, but I just want you to use these, this idea of permutations, right? And the extension to this is, let's say I have a little block here. So. I want to get from A to B, and this is down in Kensington, and I got to go over the Louise Bridge at some point, right? So there's only one way to get to the, you know, I, I have a number of ways to get from here to 
to here, which is that I have to go one, two, three. So the first thing we do is we just count blocks, right? We just say there are one, two, three, four, five. You have to go five blocks. But three of them are east or the same, and two of them are south or the same. And that's this guy here. For this one here, I have to go one, two, three, four blocks. two of which are the same and two of which are the same, right? I mean, two of which are east and two of which are south. And what I do is I multiply those two sets of numbers together, right? Because for every one of these, so five factorial over three factorial, two factorial is, eh, five times four over two is 10, I think. And four factorial over two factorial, two factorial is eh, four times three, six, I think. so that I have 60 different paths, right? And the way it works is this. I have 10 routes to get from here to here is 10, and then from here, each of these 10 then has six different routes that it can take, right? You got one, two, three, four, five, you know, six. You can count them each out, but there's six. So you go 10 times six, right? We're not gonna add, we're gonna multiply. So if you get blocks, that are set up in this pattern, then that question is doable, right? You just work out for each individual block. Okay, how many ways here times how many ways here times how many ways here? Just do them each separately, multiply them together. Okay, that's all you have to know about pathways. I really highly doubt you're going to see one on the exam, but I'll give you one on the just in case, right? You should see them. But uh, they show a different way of doing it in the book. Don't do it that way. They're just adding. That's beyond the curriculum, right? That's beyond what you need to know. And I checked it out because I went through the curriculum very carefully. To, do I see the word pathway here? And the answer was no. I don't see the word pathway. Okay. But they chose to throw it in the book. So there's one of the book questions. And it'll look something like this. Okay, don't do that one. And what it means is it's joined in more than one spot, okay? You don't have to do that. There's no way to do that using permutations, and the idea is we're restricting this to permutations, right? And it's permutations with repetitions.